This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me, and He's calling me. Good morning. Oh my goodness. It is Monday, 11.30 a.m., 94.1, wave 94. And this is Escape to Heaven. You're listening to Servant Marcia from Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. And I cannot get away from the seed of the woman. I, I, I know it's important for us, you and I, to escape. Look at what we're seeing in today's news. I mean, oh my God, what happened on Friday evening? Uh, eight states, a tornado, utterly destroyed. And some people, it was their final moment of life on earth. And they either went to heaven or they went to hell. But I'm here with the word to let you know that we can live in heaven even while we're on earth. And the things that are going on today, the evil, the discord, the weather, the politics, racism, division, family turmoil, slavery, poverty, there's just so much going on. To, without realizing it, we all need or want to escape. I want to talk about the remnant. The remnant of the woman's seed. You know, God selected lineage, which came through Abraham, rejected him so many times, um, and usually went after the fallen angels or the fake slash other gods, being disobedient to the Ten Commandments and being an adulterous wife is what that remnant or what the seed, the woman's seed became. But God remained faithful even when... um they ran away, even when they wouldn't honor him as their Lord and Savior or as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, or or even when they refused to acknowledge that he did so much to bring them to him, such as delivering them from Egypt. But he still remained faithful and set aside a portion of the woman's seed, which he called the remnant. There was a reason for that. Because the real, the, the woman seed, meaning Jesus, the word made flesh, had to be born through the lineage that God himself selected for himself to fulfill the prophetic word spoken by the creator in the Garden of Eden when he said, I will put enmity between thy seed, the serpent seed, and the woman seed. So in order for that prophetic word to be fulfilled, the word made flesh had to come and dwell upon the earth. We're going to go back to the bondage of Egypt, you know, when they were in Egypt. Uh, as you know, they, um, they, they first went there as 70 souls, during the period that Joseph was reigning as the prime minister next to the Pharaoh. And after being there and living in Goshen and becoming prosperous and multiplying and fulfilling the, the word, the blessings that God placed upon all of us when we were created spiritually, um, the Israelites did that. But then there arose a king that did not know about God, Jehovah, 
the Lord, the King of Kings, so the God that Joseph and his family served. And he began to put the Israelites in slavery. Uh, the children of Israel cried because of the bondage. Uh, their cry came up to God by the reason of the bondage. God heard their groaning. And then he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked down upon the children of Israel and he respected their crying. So when you and I, as children of God, that believe and have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and thus we become children of Abraham by faith and through the act of Jesus Christ himself, the blood, the cross, uh, by that action, we become children of Abraham. When we cry out to the Lord, God hears us, amen, and he remembers his covenant with Abraham even though we're coming through the act of Jesus Christ, amen, by our own faith. So God commissioned Moses in Exodus 7 chapter and says, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Okay, so Exodus 11 chapter, uh, this is just before they're going to be released. The Lord said unto Moses, I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go. He will throw you out. So now speak into the ears of the uh of the people and tell them to borrow of their neighbor, which is their Egyptian neighbor, uh, jewels of silver and gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. I want to stop right there because we have a lot of conversation about the wealth transfer. So I want you to know that's not a new concept because here it is happening again as the Israelites are being delivered from slavery by God himself through Moses the wealth transfer is taking place. So they're taking the wealth from Egypt and taking it with them as they leave the land of Egypt. Um, the Lord gave them favor, and God said, about midnight I will go in the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. So God did do that. And as a result, Pharaoh released the Israelites so that they can go and be with their Lord and Savior. Amen. While they were in the wilderness, Exodus, the 19th chapter, uh, God desired to go into covenant, even more so with the people themselves, and said that um, to Moses, he said, you shall go to the house of Jacob, tell the children of Israel, you have seen what the Lord did unto the Egyptians, how God himself bared them on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice. So there's a condition as we're in covenant with God. We, we need to obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. And he says, um, keep my covenant and you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. Okay, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. And these are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. So Moses did that. And then there was the process of sanctification. So <clears throat> when God released a word unto you, saints of God, letting you know that he has called you for a particular reason or purpose, and he's let you understand that you are kings and priests unto him, then you individually, like myself, must go through the process of sanctification, just as Moses did with the Israelites. So he told them to wash their clothes, sanctify themselves for three days, and then the Lord would come. And sure enough, when the Lord came, he said, you cannot be, he told the men, 
that they could not be with their wives. So that's another thing. In order to complete the process of going into covenant with God, not only do you sanctify yourself, but you you maintain intimacy with the Lord only for a period of time. So that way it's not mixed or mingled. Amen. It is just intimacy with God and God himself releases unto you his glory. Amen. And it came to pass on the third day that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So when God's glory come, it's something that you know, you feel it, you hear it, you're affected by it. And then Exodus, the 20th chapter, the Lord began to say what the commandments are. And guess what his first thing was? He says, I am. First of all, he identifies who he is to you as he did with the Israelites. He said, I am Jehovah, your God, who liberated you from slavery. All of us that are born again, uh, seeking the face of God, going to church at different levels of transformation and being conformed to the image of Jesus, we were all liberated from the slavery of sin. And so God identifies to us. Holy Spirit lets us know that it is the Lord that set you free, not you. Amen. <clears throat> so he says, you may, you cannot worship. You can have no other God. I would like to read from the King, King James Version. Let me see if I have a Bible here. And I'm going to read from Exodus, the 20th chapter. And here's what it says. You shall have no other God before me. Thou shall not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to these images or worship them or serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children upon upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That's what God is saying. So when you worship other gods, God construe that to mean that you hate him and you're rejecting him. And he says, uh, he shows mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. Also, you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold you guiltless. Here's the um, really important one. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shall not do any work, thou nor thy servant, thy servant, Thy maidservant, your cattle, strangers within thy gates for in six days. The Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, meaning honored it, sanctified it, set it aside. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So that is a commandment that actually has the promise of long life. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house or anything in it. So that is the Ten Commandments. And that is the foundation upon which the covenant is confirmed. So, yes, God made the covenant with Isaac, Jacob, Abraham. However, he confirmed it and said, well, you can also have that covenant, but here's the condition, which is the Ten Commandments. Now, we're going to go on some more in, in, in the Israelites' life because so many times after going into the promised land, 
uh, they went against the Lord. They were disobedient. They did not listen or adhere to those Ten Commandments. They didn't even adhere while they were in the wilderness. They, they made a golden calf. I mean, all kind of stuff. Even to the point of uh, resenting the leadership that God put upon that tri- that uh, nation uh, to where some of them went alive to hell. Alive, didn't die. They went, the ground opened and swallowed them. So the Israelites' relationship with the Lord is one where they are uh, many times, many, many times not obedient or adhering to the Ten Commandments. Now, here's one in particular uh, with the prophet Jeremiah, and this is during the 13th year of Josiah. Now, Josiah actually tried to live a holy lifestyle and to bring the entire kingdom into righteousness. He got rid of all the Baal worship altars and I mean, he, he moved the priests, the false prophets and priests. He did a lot. Okay. And then he went and seek the face of the Lord to say, God, what do you want me to do? What's going on? He did that. So Jeremiah is saying, uh, 25th chapter, starting at third verse, he talks about how from the 13th year to the 23rd year, the word of the Lord had come and how he would rise early and every day give them God's word and how the Lord had sent unto uh, Israel all of his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But Israelites did not hear them, did not incline to hear them. And uh, matter of fact, uh, they even turned, they said, turn ye again now, everyone from his wicked ways, from his evil ways, from the evil of your doings, dwell in the land that the Lord hath given you and your fathers forever and ever. Go not after other gods to serve them, worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. That's the Lord speaking to his people. And Jeremiah is saying, yet you have not hearkened unto me, said the Lord. You've provoked me to anger. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all of your families of the north, said the Lord. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, isn't that strange that God would call Nebuchadnezzar, who is not an Israelite, his servant. Wow. And will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them. You can anger God to the point where he utterly destroy you and make them an astonishment, hissing and a perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the bride, the sound of millstones, the light of the candle, and the whole land shall be a desolation and astonishment. Why? Because of idolatry. I really almost hate to say the words that I've said because my eyes over the weekend saw the utter destruction that was done to those cities where the tornadoes landed, utter destruction, utter. Even the fact that one was a candle manufacturer, he said, I will take away the light of the candle. I will take away electricity in our day and age as well. And we just saw this happen last weekend. Whew. Now these nations shall serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. And once those 70 years are accomplished, then God himself will punish the king of Babylon. In Second Chronicles 34 chapter, um, 
Here's another mention from a prophetic voice. It says, because the Israelites forsake God, they have forsaken him, burnt incense unto other gods, provoked him to anger. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants and um, of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, great and small. And the king, and that's King Josiah, after he had seeked the face of the Lord and was told that God was going to uh, execute judgment, he brought out and read to all of his people the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the covenant is based upon adhering to those Ten Commandments, sanctification. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, to keep his commandments, his testimonies, his statutes with all his heart and soul, and to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. As a result, that king caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it, and the inhabitants did according to the covenant of God. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertain to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. Okay? So when you have a righteous king, that righteous king will then cause all the nations to serve the living God. As a result, they will all be blessed. In Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, because, you know, we're still talking about the woman's seed, but the woman's seed has become rebellious and very much equal to acting out in the same manner that the serpent seed acts and believes. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. So if you have pastors that are not giving out the word of God, I'm so grateful the church I'm going to now, All Nations Church. Oh, my God, that pastor, uh, Pastor Dow, I believe. Oh, the word, the word, the word, the word. This is what God wants. The pastors must feed the flock, the word of God. Because if not, the people will become evil. But here's what the Lord said in Exodus 23rd chapter. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I've driven them and will bring them again to their foes. And they will be fruitful and increase. And we're seeing that physically being manifested since 1948, okay, with Israel. Because Israel became a nation again. God brought all of his people from all parts of the earth, black, white, green, blue, red, didn't matter, from everywhere, Africa, Ethiopia, Australia, India, everywhere, China, and they're all coming to Jerusalem. But that is what the Lord prophesied through Jeremiah, okay? And um, he will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice in the earth. Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name wherein or whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. So God it's true to his word. The woman's seed will fulfill the destiny that the Lord spoke in the Garden of Eden. No matter what the enemy does, the mixing of the seeds, the hybridization, uh, mixing human with animals, all this human with other uh, type of beings, no matter what, the image of God will prevail. And God's word will also prevail. Amen. So uh, Jeremiah 24 is a great example of seeing the woman seed, how some part of it 
of the woman's seed will be good and will be obedient and, and will receive the blessings of the Lord. And then there's the other part, the bigger part of the woman's seed that will just be evil. And then they will receive the curses of God because of their heart. So looking at Jeremiah 24 chapter, you're listening to Escape to Heaven, Servant Marcia from Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. Saving the remnant. How do you save the remnant? You have to be able to discern and distinguish the good figs from the evil fig. One basket had very good figs. This is Jeremiah 24. Even like the figs that are first ripe, the other basket had naughty figs that you could not eat. They were so bad. Then said the Lord unto Jeremiah, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And Jeremiah answered, Figs. The good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil. And now the word of the Lord comes into Jeremiah and says, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. Now notice, God sent them into captivity, but the captivity for the good figs were for they good, for their good. You can prosper in a period of time when the whole world is going through tribulations because this is God's pattern. Amen. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good and I will bring them back to this land and I will build them and not pull them down and I will plant them and not pluck them up and I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God for they shall return unto me with their whole heart and as the evil fix which cannot be eaten so will I give Zedekiah his princes and the residue and they'll remain in this land And I will deliver them to be removed unto all the kingdoms of the, I would say, the Babylonians. We'll see. But anyway, for their hurt to be a reproach, okay? And um, a taunt, a curse. I'll send the sword, the famine, the pestilence, and they shall be consumed. See, if you are the woman seed, you still have to make a decision. Your will is still important. Will you be an obedient woman seed? Or will you be an evil, naughty fig? Meaning that you're rebellious against the Lord thy God. And so 2 Chronicles 36 chapter, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land. Notice that those 70 years, the land was not worked by the people of the Israelites. So the land itself also had a Sabbath for 70 years. Amen. And so in the first year, and this is when the Lord uh, will put in the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to um, build him a house after those 70 years. We're going to talk about that next week when I come back about what happens after the Lord bring the remnant from captivity and other lands back to himself. And, uh, you know, sometimes we don't want to praise the Lord. Sometimes we think that it's all about us, the beings. But as the Lord said, the entire world, the whole earth belongs to him. And Jesus mentioned in Matthew, the third chapter, I believe it was Jesus, where he said, bring forth therefore fruits. It could have been... uh, Well, anyway, fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree, listen to this, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You can be the seed of the woman, but if you are not bringing forth fruits that reflect that you have repented of your sins and your iniquity and that you are walking after the spirit and not after the flesh, you will be cut down and thrown into outer darkness and into the fire. 
Acts, the second chapter, 38th verse, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the enabler, the comforter that will empower you to live within those Ten Commandments and even more because it becomes spiritual and not legalistic. The Spirit of God brings liberty. Amen. Wherever the Lord is, there's liberty to even serve God greater. Amen. Ezekiel 14, chapter 6, verse says, Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, Repent, turn yourselves away from these idols, turn away your face from all your abominations, run to the Lord. Amen. Joel, the second chapter, 13, verse says, Rend your heart. Don't do it for an outward show. Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious, merciful, slow to anger of great kindness, and repented him of the evil that he's thinking to do. Matthew, the third chapter, and this is Jesus said, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Saints of God, this is the hour, this is the season, this is the time. You can see all that is happening. You can see preparation for one government, preparation for one faith, one religion. But we must repent so that we can be found by God himself to be the woman seed, which is the remnant. Father God, today I would lift up myself and lift up the people that are in Radio Land. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, to touch our heart. Send your Holy Spirit, God, to cause us to repent, Lord God, and turn away from all the idols that we have found on this earth. The the idol the idol of mammoth, you know, serving money. I'd rather go to work than come and deal with the Lord and worship Him. I'd rather go the 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 idol of sports, you know. I'd rather stay home and watch the the games than stop and take time and be with the Lord. Father God, there are so many idols, Lord God, that stand up in front of us. And Father, I ask you to blind our eyes to idolatry, blind our hearts, Lord God, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, give us the desire to want to be with you and want to worship you so that we can live in covenant with you, Lord God, and receive your blessings, Lord, minute by minute, instant by instant. Lord, we walk in your anointing anointing so that we can empower and show this world that is dying that you are the God of the living and that you are the living God. You have been listening to Escape because you can, because you deserve to receive heaven as God has created it for you, you, and you. I pray blessings upon you. This is Servant Marcia signing off. May the Lord be with you always. God bless you. Anybody wanna see you love one?